so so yeah definitely injury that's that's our biggest thing now i mean the first the first 40 what years are easy then the next 40 odd years will be a little bit challenging but yeah, exactly. we're still on the map yeah because now we're gonna well, like another day i, I uh, the last day training before these this close close out yeah. uh, the lockdown i hurt my knee you know like whoa uh, and if a guy there in the gym on you know, Friday and then he tried to take me down to his money and it was very bad, bad pain and it's still a bit sore you know like it was yeah. eight weeks after we had eight weeks now bro break of course I was surfing and everything else but you know like me stretch yeah. I still see, feel so that's the thing when you get older if you have one injury and a bad injury not a horrible injury but an injury so it take much yeah, longer. longer yeah and if you keep injuring that same thing you're gonna have problems like like shoulders a bit this sore, but then it will be stretch and stuff. So I, mm -hmm. I hope still doing the keep doing the activities and move around with no injuries, no? Yeah. Because to break something, fine. if you break something is okay. If you break your leg, if you break your arm, you just bone, you fix it. But the joints yeah, the injury, injury I mean injuring the joints. So if you get the joints bad, so then you cannot move anymore. That's that's bad. But yeah, that's joints are hard. Side, like I, it's all good. Yeah, <laughs> nice. Also, another thing, well, that's, that's the physical part. So, um, as the years pile on, does your training and philosophy change? And if it has, how has it changed in the last 15 years? So, compared to, I don't know, say, 15 years ago, when we used to train, to now, um, how's your philosophy train, changed in training? <clears throat> it's pretty uh, much the same. I, don't think, I don't think the philosophy is still the same. Just the, 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 way, the way of um, exposing, let's say, the philosophy is, I think, that what we imagine would be the samurai philosophy, the warrior philosophy. If you want to fight, you have to be a fighter. If you want to swim, you have to be a swimmer. No, so you have to practice that thing. The more you practice, the better you get, and tougher you get. But the philosophy didn't change. The way to, to show it, I think, changed because since I got here, in Brazil, it was even tougher. But since I got here, since you start training with me, you know, the guys start training with me, it was much harder. Training harder, warm up harder, and bash each other. Now we have to get the, the business side of it. So, you know, I'm not very good on it. You know, and then um, I don't teach the beginners class because of that reason, because I can be too aggressive to them. You know, and then they leave the gym. So I normally don't teach the beginners. And also, I don't have patience to beginners anymore. So... Like to be, but I, but I, I like to, I, I'm kind of military training because we had Marcelo Bering that was very tough training. Then we had George, I had George, I had, I trained Marcelo tough training, I had trained George tough training. When I went to North Brazil, I had Alfredo that was a military, even tougher training, military training, right? Mm. And went to South, I started to put my training as that, that, that way I learned. And that way, like, I think uh, if you want a result, you have to dedicate yourself. You cannot just sit there and wait for the result to come. But that's not for just for martial arts. That's for everything. But people don't want 100%. to get the, the suffering or the effort to get that. They just want to sit down and to in these, what I don't like now, nowadays because this has become the common, the normal. Everybody mm -hmm. stays there and wait. You know, everybody soft. So oh, little Johnny is okay. You have a, a participation medal, medal. No, you don't have mm -hmm. a participation medal, little Johnny. You lost. Go train more. Come back next day. But nowadays everybody's a champion. So then you okay, even if you're never a champion, but you have to train hard to become to try to become one. And that philosophy never changed. What I cannot do now is go as hard as I used to go years ago. You know, like with my students. I cannot like bash them, I cannot scream with them, I cannot uh, it's still hit them with the sword, you know. But I have to pick with <laughs> have to pick <laughs> who I do and who I don't. And that's what yeah. things change, you know, because in the past you didn't choose. You just go and go hard on everyone and whoever stays, stay. But nowadays, because all the other soft gyms around, you know, change the philosophy. Ah, because now uh, you can do this, but you cannot do that. Oh, yeah, no problem. You don't want to train, don't train, sit down. So if you don't want to train, don't come to the gym. You know, like just simple like that. If you don't want to get wet, don't go out in the rain. I think, I think, I think most martial arts, yeah, most martial arts, my philosophy i think my philosophy is the same i just changed a little bit a bit more the way how to to teach and to represent it. yeah most most martial arts i think are going this i remember when i first started training back as a you know just barely a teenager man the things we did then the instructor would be locked up in jail now <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah, exactly. i mean 
I mean, we were rolling on parquetry. We were jumping over uh, parked seats, trying to roll on the concrete in front. This once, once it was raining outside, and the the instructor, his name was Dean Gum, decided to do the training outside in the rain. So we trained the whole two hours outside in the rain. It was it's yeah. And I think um, and I think uh, it's. Do you think we'll we'll lose the essence of of martial arts? It's, the way the way things are going because our society is, is relatively safe unless you want to join the military and and do these things or become a police officer yeah, but that's something the, where you have to confront violence but yes if in, you never, if you never leave australia you'll be soft but if yeah. you leave australia you have problems yeah. people like that True. come yeah. I, if you go to macedonia, you want, you go there, you're okay. yeah. if you go to macedonia you're not tough they they're die. hard if you go to brazil oh, they're very hard they die if you go to yeah. america if you're not tough they die even if all the laws yeah, and stuff. Yeah. If you go to Europe, some countries, yeah. if you're not tough there, you die. Go to Italy, go to this place where the people are tough. It's not but, tough. But, it's not the, I, I, what I think is toughness is not be rude and everything else, but be strong. And to be strong, you have to be strong in anywhere, in a safe place as Australia or Switzerland, mm -hmm. or in a tough place as I know, Africa, the Congo or somewhere. We, me and you are gonna be tough anywhere. Doesn't matter. I can put me in the Congo, they can put me in the Middle East. They're gonna be tough anyway. Or they're gonna shoot me, I'm gonna shoot them. You adapt. Now if you don't have the right. if you don't have the tough, if you don't have the the resilience and the, the strength in you, you're gonna cry. I, yeah. you know what? Another day last week in the water here. Surfing, there's a lot of fights in surfing. In the water here. A guy I suffer I went let's to explain you quick. Who in the on a wave, who is closer to where the wave breaks? Uh, is the owner of, that like has the right of the wave, right? So I dropped the wave here, it broke, and the other guy tried to drop in on me. We called, so he dropped in front of me. The board hit, yeah. My board hit because it was already coming some speed. Yeah. When it dropped, I couldn't stop. The board hit, yeah. We fell, he stand up in the water on the on the below the chest, like this. Normally, I would punch him or slap him or choke him straight away, but the guy yeah. fell. The boards were wrapped wrap around or the leash, so I, I took the boards apart first. I said, man, what are you doing? Not as calm as that. What the fuck are you doing? And then, uh, and, oh, I didn't see you. I didn't see you, what? And then he, oh, no, but remember the, um, of course you remember, Gladiator. Remember the movie Gladiator? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah of course. Remember when, uh, yeah. when the Gladiator, when, uh, when the Australian guy, I forgot his name, uh, Russell Crowe. Russell, Russell, Russell Crowe, yeah. First, the first time he's going to fight in the arena, when he put them with the, the, the chuckles like this, and there's a guy in front of him, and when they, 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 they almost to open the gate, the guy peace on, the, on himself. Yeah. On himself. Yeah. The guy was exactly the same face as that guy. The same. <laughs> the same. The same. Yeah. yeah. I looked yeah. at the guy, what the fuck you did? And looked to me, I didn't see you. It was like, got yellow, white, like he was pissing himself. I remember, I remember the gladiator standing straight away. Yeah. And, then, <laughs> and he just looked to me like this and no, he disarmed me because if you say, what the fuck are you pushing? But uh, he said, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know. He said, I said, okay, I'm not passionate. This guy yeah, was too, too weak to, to have a yeah. fight. He didn't fight him. So they yeah. came to him and said, look, I'm not fight you, but you are wrong. You're going to pay my board. Because it's broken. Yeah. So let's go outside. You're going to pay my board right yeah. now. $100 right now. Did he pay it? And he, oh, man. And he, oh, man, I'm, I'm unemployed. I don't have money. Said, what the fuck? The worst guy to pay my board. I cannot tell you. I cannot pay my board. <laughs> that's it. That's it. You just leave him. Exactly. Yeah, so you just I, leave So I said, man, uh, you know what? Don't do this fucking shit again. Otherwise, they're going to bash. Go away from here. And then that's it. That's, that's right. But, actually, yeah. Will, actually <laughs> Will, Will had a very good question. You know, Will said, what's your biggest weakness? He's looked for years and couldn't find one. I found <laughs> one, Will. <laughs> I, hey. Gary, tell him, tell, tell Will, Will your weakness, then, then I'll tell him what your weakness is. Will, if I tell you, I have to kill you. Will, I will tell you, he never drinks. <laughs> if we can catch him drunk, <laughs> we can choke him. <laughs> he promised me when he's, the birth of his son, we will drink together. Still hasn't happened. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. We have a story there. <laughs> you, yeah. your 30th birthday, 30th, was it? You yeah, 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 yeah. And the whole crew drunk from that Arakia. 
That was 60%. That was good stuff. It was. Hey, Pesci. And, and I didn't take and I didn't take anything much. I, did, I think I took two glasses and I was already passed. Like, oh. not passed out, but it was like that. And Pesci took about yeah. the bottle and he couldn't do anything else. Couldn't move. Oh, man. Uh, what happened was Pesci, Rob. Pesci said, Rob, I'll give you a... I'll come to your birthday and we'll do a show. All right. I'll Have you got some alcohol? Do you want to try rakia? I bring one kilo of rakia on the table. And I go, okay, guys, I thought I'd drink it a little bit. I come back 20 minutes later. Where's the rakia? Oh, we drank it. It's gone. I went, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> this is not something you want to drink. One kilo of rakia in 20 minutes. So I didn't get my, I didn't get my Brazilian show. I just got Pesci and everyone sleeping un, unconscious on my grass, which was a good night. <laughs> Yeah, that's nah, it was it was it was good. Matthew asked as well. Matthew, they they wrote it up. How do you find cont contentment in jujitsu after training so many years? So how do you how do you find fulfillment in jujitsu? It's a young guy in his twenties. He's asking a question. So how do you find con contentment, like fulfillment in jujitsu after training many years? Well, well, well that's Matthew. what kind of I said before. Like, yeah, you answered that. So in jujitsu, but like the same kind of uh, thought. In Jiu Jitsu, uh, we became a, become a family. It's not a business. It's not a service. I don't I don't treat my students as customers, and they I hope they don't treat me as a as a supplier. You know, so they don't go there and pay because the guys who have experience who came to to me and treat me as com just commercially, I just kick them out. You know, it doesn't work. There's no the empathy. There's no the. You have to become a family. You have to become your friends and your family because you are there. And that's natural. That not have to to become has to become because you don't force this. But when you are there every day training with the same guys and suffering and bashing each other and laughing and going for food or, yeah. or whatever and talk, you know, so become your part of your day. The more you go in a place, more you get used to that those people and more you get connected to those people. And that's what's a good part of it because it, once you become friends with your students or if your training partners, whoever or your instructors and start to do things together. So you feel that going to training is going to have fun. It's going to a good place. It's a place that you like, you know, and can be anything. Like, it can be like training tennis, training this and that, that. but Jiu-Jitsu is very much like a family. So when we train together, like when you come to visit me, when I go to your gym, it's like going to visit a, a brother, a brother house, you know, yeah. like so we feel at home, a family, feel that people. And of course, there's some guys who don't, don't adapt and go away, but you know that you are in your, you are at home. So if you're at home, so that's why it's nice. Because if you go there first, if you go there, oh, I don't want to be here. No, yeah. so good. But if you go there, oh, my friends are there. Like when you go to, I don't know, any kind of friends you have, or you visit your friend, oh, my friend's there, and his family, and his friends, and let's yeah. laugh, and let's have fun together. People associate too much like, uh, you can only have fun, and you can only feel uh, comfortable if you go, let's say, to the pub, drink with your friends, or if you go do this, or if you go do that. But you can be anywhere, like, and have the same fun. So jujitsu for me, I go there. When I go to the gym, I go to see my friends, I go to see my family, I go to see the guys I like to be with, and they like to be with me. So once you like the environment uh, and you like each other, so that's the best place to be. And the same when I go to the beach with my friends, or when I go visit you in your house, or when I go, we go eat something together after training. So that's the the fulfillment. That's if you if you if you good. That's why you... Yeah, my... Yeah. Yeah, my guys were shocked because when you... I think it was a few years ago, you went to Canberra. They go, man, he actually came out with us. He socialized. He's a lot of fun, Paolo. <laughs> you went to the pub. You had a good time. I go, yeah, I've been doing it for, you know, back then, 15 years with him. It is a lot of fun. And yeah. I think you mentioned that... Yes. And I think you mentioned that in, in other talks that you've had with other people where it hasn't got that hierarchy thing in other martial arts that I've done, you know, for someone mm. to, to, to talk to you, they have to come through me. You don't see Paolo, Paolo is here, and then I will, I will address whatever you have, you know, yeah. whereas yeah. with us, we're on that level playing field. Yeah, sure. Visit Paolo, go. Yeah. Next time, you know, go, go there, you know, and um, that was this, a is, big... this is what makes us unique. Yes. That, exactly. That was a big change that uh, from the Japanese original jiu-jitsu to Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Because when it came to Brazil, besides become uh, the, the, the technical change and everything else, but and also the Gracie family was already a family and people started to go in, but it became, um, got the Brazilian style, you know? Mm -hmm. Like Brazilian style was more relaxed and people laughing, people, I remember, I remember um, 
has to, I don't know if it was Sakuraba, I think it was Sakuraba. Sakuraba? I think it was Sakuraba after the fights in Pride and everything, they took, uh, or one of the Japanese, I'm not sure if it was Sakuraba, I remember the, that that was in a magazine and everything. They took, um, I don't know, 20 Japanese guys, fighters to train in Brazil, Jiu Jitsu, not MMA, Jiu Jitsu. And yeah. end of the class, the things that they noticed the most, besides all their friendship and everything, was yeah. that everybody <laughs> shake hands and hug and, uh, and hug everybody. Yeah. In Japan, like the traditional Japanese, in front of the master sensei and bow, and that's it, finish. And in Brazil, yeah. everybody like shake hands and hug like we do the, the line on the end, and after they go with something, and, and so they, that's exactly what, they, what, they, what the Japanese said. Oh, in Brazil, the instructor is part of the, everybody's part of one family. In Japan, the instructor is some guy up there and all the students are here. So like you said, you never talk to the instructor. You have to be introduced or have to ask for a time to the instructor. So it's a guy who's up there. But in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, we, like many people come to me and say, oh, uh, excuse me, like beginners, excuse me, how should I call you? Sensei or Sifu or Master? I said, well, call me Paulo. That's my name. That's <laughs> so, right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's a more proximity. That's, that's, that's an uh, important thing in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and that changed a lot. And that's why I was talking about the family, and you feel good because you are among your friends. You are not here, and the guy is all the way up there, and you, oh, my God, he's, he's better. Maybe he's your master, and you have to respect him as your master, but yeah. he's also your friend. You know, and you, come, and you can come and talk to him about, I don't know, something that happened to you, or how you feel. You know, people don't have this... Um, connection in the beginning, but after the guy come up to yesterday, this happened to me, and, 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 and even students, it's very good because no becomes yeah. becomes a part of your life. And that's a, yeah, that's I, a I, I, I remember one guy when he, he, he just joined for a month, and in the mornings we go for coffee. And this was uh, uh, before Cam opened up, and he asked, oh, do you guys go for coffee? Yeah, come. Am I allowed to? I said, Matt, what's wrong with you, man? What do you mean? What makes you not allowed? Come. Is that you, know, you have to? You, I got to. You have to come now that you said that. You know, and it, and exactly like, because, like you said, yeah, everybody becomes part of a family, and the guy is welcome to a family. So they maybe they come to the gym and say, "Oh, it's martial arts and this and that." The guys, and then suddenly he's well treated by everyone. Okay, come on, man, let come here and help you here. And then, what's your name? Where you come from? And then, oh, it's a nice place. Actually, it's not so scary. And then stay. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's right. That's right. That's the that's the good thing. So, what would you like to see in the future with the BJJ community? Like, in people in general, where would you, what would you like to see in the future? Now, now you're the first, you're the, you, you're the reason why we have these competitions in, uh, in New South Wales. I mean, I remember I was competing in Jiu-Jitsu comps well before you came. We had the one competition, the Sydney Cup, and then we had to go to the ISCA comps. Um, where we we take on guys that didn't even have a single training session of jiu-jitsu. They just pay. We we take on the grappling guys, and then there'll be some guy you you're giving him an armbar and he's not tapping. And I go, "Are you okay? Like, do you know what's going on?" Oh, I paid five dollars for five dollars extra. I get to do grappling after my point sparring and my cutters. And I went, "Have you had a training session?" He goes, "No, no, no, no." I went, "Oh, man." <laughs> you know, so. So you, you basically started it from day one. Like we didn't have a federation, New South Wales Federation. I mean, we used to go to car parks and mats and try and compete, all this craziness. And then somehow we saw a structure, a rules put into place yeah. and, and the competition circuit went on. I remember competing, you had to win three, uh, three times to become a state champion. Yeah. You know, the points were accumulated, et cetera. So, so, so you, you basically started it, the whole New South Wales circuit, BJJ, the competitions and everything. So uh, as the founding father, what would you like to see in the future with, with the competitions and in general, the BJJ community? Yeah, on that time, in 2000, when I arrived here, there was nobody, just me and uh, some of the lower belts. And then a lot of the two black belts arrived, Marcelo from Grace Bar and Bruno from Grace City. They arrived and... Um, we sit together, we all meet, live in Manly. We were training together hidden, you know, because we're three different gyms, but we had to train someone, so we closed the gym and trained. Yeah. But, um, and then we decided, and then we, we thought, what are you going to do to grow jiu-jitsu here? Like, he, like it's in Brazil, or in America, was growing at the time as well. Okay, the only way to do it, we cannot invite everyone, we don't have any publicity, we, UFC was not here, we, don't have, we cannot go on TV, it's too expensive. So the only thing we can do is do competition. So let's organize this federation, a federation, make a circuit, and bring our students, 
and then our students gonna bring their friends, and then their friends gonna bring their friends and start to grow. And then, um, then that was the idea. So the idea on that time in 2000, in 2001 when we uh, found the federation, was to come to the point that it is today. Because today Jiu Jitsu is in Australia, the level, technical level, uh, skills level, instructors level, students level is all world, world, world level. Yeah, there's no more like it's not here or there, it's world level. There's less people in Australia than in Brazil and America, but that's the same world level. We have world champions from here for many times. But um, what I think is the level came today now, we don't need to do much more. We just have to go with the flow, go with the International Federation, go with the rules that apply now. You know, because the, the hard part was done. The hard part was when we arrived here to make people mm -hmm. know about it, understand, and grow. Now it's like, let's say, we plant the seed, and now it's flourishing. So now just let it, let it go. You know, now it, I, see, I see the future similar to now just flowing and uh, improving as together with the worldwide Jiu-Jitsu, or Jiu-Jitsu worldwide. Like with the International Federation, with the Abu Dhabi Federation, with the even if our federation here will have high level uh, instructors, high level fighters, high level uh, referees, uh, everything is on where it's supposed to be. When I got here, the world was here and Australia was here. We did the job, and of course, not just me with the guys here, but also Peter DeBean and the guys from, from the Australian Federation and West Australia and, and uh, Queensland and all the states. But we, we being, me being part of it and you being part of it, we did, we brought uh, Australia level of Jiu-Jitsu from below the world level to the level. Now we are growing together. So I think that the future here is guaranteed. I don't, I don't see like anything that bring us, can bring us back. And uh, we just keep following because the guys who are arriving here or who are getting the black belt, say they are conscious about it. You know, Jiu-Jitsu, the Jiu-Jitsu Federation, International Federation is so strong everywhere now. With our help, I did federations in Brazil, I did federations with our help, we are putting everything together. Like you did the Federation of Macedonia now, and they're gonna yeah, get it at European, uh, European level. So as soon as uh, a country comes to that level, just flows, you know, just goes together. Now it's an organic thing. We don't need to push anything. Just, of course, have to observe for bad competitions, because bad competition yeah. are bad for the sport. You know, so if a bad competition for Jiu-Jitsu, so there you have to check. Because yep. okay, who's organized, who's doing, who's not doing, what's the rules? Because, example, there's some competition here because now there's the thing, gi and no gi. And the no gi are the dangerous ones because people can get very injured because of uh, greed of the organizers. So some of them already spoke to the guys, man, you, or you do properly or you don't do this. Because if someone gets broken here or someone gets a bad injury here, the bad name is for you, Jitsu, it's not for you. You put your money in your pocket, you know, and then all the issues communities get bad. So there's two or three competitions here that basically one competition, I don't let uh, our roots students go because you no, know, like, you know, think it, they don't care about anything. They just care about the money. Bad referees, bad, uh, bad small uh, fighting area and undec undecided rules, like not, not, not clear rules. So that's the danger what comes with uh, success, with something that's, that's good. And always some, mm -hmm. someone comes and try to, oh, okay, I'm going to do this because I want to make money and don't care about it. So federal competitions have to take care of the athletes first. And then have to have rules and safety. And that's very important. And then, but in general, like 99.9% .9 of the competitions in Australia are world level. I, could, I don't want to tell names, but there's one or two there that supposed not to be there. And I, I yeah. one thing maybe I could, I could ask for the future, have, a, um, I don't know, an organ could fiscalize it to, to watch it and see, okay, this competition is here, this, but not bureaucratic, make you bureaucratic, you know, not to make you trouble. Just say, okay, well, who are you? Okay, we are New South Wales Federation. What rules do you use? We use the International Federation rules. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Who are you? Are we a ABC competition? What rules do you use? What's it? Is a gi, is a no gi? What rules do you use? Ah, no, we make our own rules. Wait a minute. Your own rules? What are your own rules? I'll lose this and this and this. You can throw the guy upside, pin the guy down on his head. What I mean, you cannot do that. Oh, yeah. well, why? Because you're gonna kill someone, you know. And then the the name, the bad name goes to everyone. So that, not an organ, not make something too too hard, you know. But at least a, someone who has an authority to say, okay, this goes, this doesn't go. But it doesn't make too hard because you know, like the sport has to grow, and nowadays you see gi and no gi almost separate. Similar rules, but that gay competition, no gay competition, submission only competition, this and that. Oh, good. 
MMA, uh, I don't know, slap jiu-jitsu, whatever it is, but have to keep the safety for the athletes. If you follow the international rules, it's good. If you don't, you have to be have a review to see if it's okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. But besides that, That's I right. think Jiu-Jitsu is growing, growing by itself now. Any, what are your chances of thinking of uh, going to the Olympics? Jiu-Jitsu well, in the Olympics? Uh, I don't think so. No. First, because... We won't get it. Yeah, they, they, they shake, Abu Dhabi Sheikh tried this some, some years ago to do the... not under the International Federation, not under the Abu Dhabi Federation, yeah. but uh, Emirates Federation, I mean, but uh, he tried to get some countries, make some rules and yeah. Isn't to try to get there, but but judo is too strong and too similar. Mm. Like let's say white karate doesn't go to the Olympics because now there's taekwondo, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I think, but I think I think no gi has a chance. Because... I think too, because 2004, I think we all got ready to represent Australia in the Olympics in pancreation. And they were going to make it a spectator sport. And we thought, you know, Greece being Greece, for sure they were going to put it in. I mean, this was in the original Olympics 2,000 years ago. And they chose dirt bikes or something stupid yeah. like this, you know. Uh, yeah. And that was, that, was, that, was, that was a catastrophe. It, 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 was, it was a shock. I mean, you, I mean, pancreation being in uh, pancreation, for those who don't know, is, uh, is an amateur level of MMA where yeah. we could have applied our grappling skills, you know, which are predominantly the skill that you need for, for MMA into an Olympic event. And, and after that, man, that was, that was a really good opportunity. If Greece put pancreation in in 2004, now we could have had Australian tryouts, you know, there's, for, for anyone representing your country, wearing the green and gold, walking into the Olympic village is, is, is a dream come true for any athlete and we lost our opportunity. <laughs> You know, if, if there was Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu in, in the Olympics, Brazil would take about 90% of the medals. Not to be, not to be partial, but that would be the truth. Like, 9 of 10 black belts are Brazilian. You know, it would be perfect but it would... To, to go straight up. But all the rest of the world would be good, too. But uh, it would be a nice sport. But it's very similar to Judo. Uh, I think Jiu-Jitsu yeah, is similar. similar. Yeah. And uh, I think uh, no gi would have a little bit more chance. Because wrestling has uh, freestyle wrestling, Greco-Roman wrestling, this and that. So maybe they, they would take one of the wrestling uh, categories and put a jiu-jitsu, no gi there. But I still I think, think, I, still I, think, think I read a comment. I, I think I read a comment. Karate is going to the Japan Olympics. Brazil had a good opportunity in 2024 to put jiu-jitsu in. Very yeah. good opportunity. But yeah. You know, but that, that, was that. One idea. They had an idea. I heard about that. There was an idea, but like they... They were not organized enough. And because the international, that's the big thing, the international, IBJJF, International BJJ Federation, is a company. It's not, yeah. a, um, a, how to say, association. Because to be Olympic has to be, has to have, I don't know, 50 countries or whatever, uh, federations, uh, associations or federations in 50 countries. Yeah. That's why Karate never did before. Now it's going to do. Yeah. Yeah, karate is going to be good, the, good on it, man. More martial arts, the better. Yeah, like the surfing. Surfing never been Olympic. It's going to be now in Japan, the first trial for surfing. You know, like yeah. they, because grew up so much and it's on TV and everybody surfs around the world. So they, they organized in the, the head of all those. 40 years of, yeah. um, of the International Surfing uh, Association that does the amateur, not the professional, doing the events, the events, and now they, they could go. I think, it's, uh, I, think, I think it's possible, but I don't see this happening in the next it's close future. Yeah, maybe. next next 10, 20 years. 20 years, 30 yeah. years time, maybe. You know. maybe, maybe if they organize everything properly, if they have the competitions, but I think Jiu-Jitsu is going to the professional side much more than the, than the Olympic side. And could yeah. be a with, the, with the professional side, I've got a question from Michael Hoffman. He was joking in his question, but it's quite serious as well. He goes, tainted Asai and BJJ, which obviously refers to performance enhancing. Um, how, how prevalent do you think it is, especially with the top-end athlete? Like, do you see a difference? Obviously, in your time with competing, these things weren't around as much, you know. Um, but now, um, how, 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 how relevant do you... Do you think people are using performance enhancing stuff to, to win competitions? Well, I think in the I think in the beginning of the two thousand was much worse. 
I think yeah. people who used to abuse much more now because also in in the professional circuit they have now the the drug tests in mean, some of them. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Circuit. But besides that, now there's much more ways to like much more uh, how to say uh, products that are not the bad products, and then yeah. people use still use like let's say different than um, uh, uh, anabolic uh, thing like an uh, injection. And a protein shake, kind of. That's bad comparison, but like we have other ways to to get performance than just take drugs yeah. and make you may make you very like the cycles is are very bad for your body. So I think now people are, are thinking about more the health. So okay, I'm gonna do some stuff, but not that stuff because no, it's not gonna get problem in the future. And then um, but it's still yeah, it's still it's still a, some people use still a little problem even in MMA. You know, like you see. The guys using even yeah, in the always. even in the Olympics, the wrestlers and uh, all other sports yeah, guys. Like, yeah. The China, China, no, the Russian uh, team was suspended from the last Olympics because they all were using, using things. I think the Russians can't compete with the American pharmaceutical companies. They're way <laughs> ahead. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, for, yeah, it's just part of part of sport. It's it's, 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 it's across it's 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 across all sports. It's not yeah. just, you know, but also I think, also I, think that, um, I also think that uh, the products not forbidden products like the products you can go in a shop in a vitamin shop and get the best products in the world. They yeah. they are yeah. they are working much better nowadays than in the past. The past was shit yeah, products, right. products, so you can have good products and good food feeding. And good, uh, and good uh, exercise and training specific, and you can perform uh, very well. Yeah, we know a lot more about nutrition and everything exactly. than, than 20 the years ago. Recover your body, your joints, you know, get yeah. fit, keep stay fit. If you go to these vitamin shops, you know, like, or even internet, if you know what you're looking for, you're going to find without being the forbidden ones, without being good, good products, very clear, clean yeah. products, and getting much better. I think it'll be, I think it'll be better. But yeah, but they'll always be around this sport, any sport. There's no, no way out of it. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Any last things about this situation, this crazy pandemic thing that's making us all stay home and we're all going mad? You already know mad. my opinion about this. Bullshit. Yeah. That's my opinion. Pretty much. Yeah. Is that flu? Uh, oh, it's killing people. Yeah, it's killing people. All the flus killed people too before. All the, uh, lots of things kill people. Scorpions and snakes, all the things kill people. Cars and, uh, and I know, parachutes. You stop yeah, just... because of this. That was the most stupid thing ever. Every country is suffering a lot, but we are in it. So what I think now, the instead of like we complain about it, or I think uh, I hope we we go back straight away. I think the pubs yeah, are open. when they open to us. Of course, we are contact sports, so we have to be a bit less uh, contact in the very beginning. But after one month, we are back to normal. You know? Yeah, what maybe I was. I was thinking at, at the beginning, maybe just to get through it, one person, pick one person, do yeah. your warm up yeah. and do your role with one person. You know, we can, we can, we can see so, what we'll, what we'll do just to get over this. Yeah. Things we can, we can have in the gym. Of course, the hand sanitizers, make everybody wash the hand. And, yeah. uh, and someone was telling me these days, I don't remember, someone who went to, I think it was to America and there was black, uh, white mats and you have to swipe your foot as well. If there's the wipes, the wet wipes, and you wipe your foot in your yeah. hand, in your face, whatever. Wash your hands when you get there. It's just basic hygiene, you know, and wash your gears and things we do anyway. Don't go to the toilet yeah. no no, shoe, no no sandals or anything. Like anything. Yeah. And all these things. And for, yes, and for the for the train itself, yes, do the warm-up, everybody separate, like giving some space, running some space and rolling some space and hipscape. And when you get a drill for the day, just one-to-one. -one. Because yeah. we do this for a long time. That's not news for anybody. Because what do we say? If you have a flu, don't come to the gym. If you have a skin disease, don't come to the gym. If you have, you're not feeling good, don't come to the gym. If you have a dirty gaze or something, don't come to the gym. We say this every day. You know? So we yeah, keep that. Right. I think we keep that. And for our students uh, who are already first, we just tell them to do for the new students it would be a good thing because they come to the gym and see, okay, uh, wipe your hands there and then clean your foot and put your gears there and then keep some separation. But, but we've, we've just, it's just the physical nature of what we do. We keep a very strict hygiene level anyway. 
like even even before before yeah. any any yeah. viruses. You know why? You know why Korea, Japan didn't didn't have lockdown, and they did they, they, yeah. they are fit and they didn't have many deaths as well. Why? Because they keep the the everything clean. They wear so masks. They, they are very exactly. Clean. They go in the house. They don't use shoes and they wash hands all the time and they all clean and everything else. Korea the same. Korea didn't have as many. Yeah, and they fair go, so Korea Korea is back in full training. I speak to the our guys there and Joe and the guys and they said, oh, nice. good on them. You know, you know what? Mm. By the way, we are very lucky because uh, there's not much poverty like in Brazil or other places that they, they, we can we could contain the, the, the spread. And even if everybody got sick, no, it doesn't matter because uh, 102 people died. 102. Yeah, yeah, we're lucky with that. That's a, that's a good thing. Yeah. You know, it's not a good thing for anyone to die, but so, like, but 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 Australia is the best country to live in this for 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 things like this. We're uh, we 25 are, million people and we live on a continent. We don't live on a country. We actually live on a continent. And it's most important, on the end of the world. Hey, so it's the top of the world. That's what I tell everyone. To get here, they have to cross the whole world to get here. So they... <laughs> that's, what, that's, what I, that's what I told my dad. He got so scared from the communists. When the plane was coming back, he goes, drop me off here. It was <laughs> Australia. <laughs> that's it. That's <laughs> what it is. My time. <laughs> Yeah, when when they say, you know, when you when you dig a hole and you and you get to China, no man, you dig a hole from Australia, you get to Macedonia. There's, there's nowhere further. Once you pass Macedonia, you are coming back to Australia. That's it. Yeah, yeah no, ah, it's uh, it's no, but it's, I, think, uh, I think it'll be okay. I think Australia is already yeah, gone. Yeah, we'll be. We'll, yeah, we'll be fine. We have the second peak now with the pubs and these things. People are gonna get a bit sick. But the important part is that the the hostel is equipped now. So anybody yeah. gets good health and is equipped. The problem yes, they yes. not. Yeah, now it's all good. Yes, so, so people not to, not to get scared when the government says, when the government says, you know, come and train, come and train. You know, this is. Exactly. I mean, we even even before we've kept a very we've kept a very strict, um, you know, hygiene before yes. any or any coronaviruses you know came out. All the mats yeah. are always vacuumed, mopped, walls are mopped yes. every every day. You know, every gym you know has to. That's it. It's just we one are, of those things. I think we. I think jujitsu is not is not in general like you talk to all the gyms, root gyms, and all the other, all the the the, 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 the teams. I think everybody keeps used to keep and you keep. Now maybe someone okay, someone feels a bit sick of you. Don't come to the gym. Have a break. Yeah, hundred percent. Hundred hundred percent. Yeah. Okay, my friend. Now you know I've got I ran out of questions for you. Yeah. What about you know, this guy? We... I think there were some questions there, guys. You can ask something if you want to know. Uh, yeah, def open, definitely, open some, you know. Yeah, we opened some new gyms when you are back. We are, what else we are doing? Um, George is coming this year. We complete 20 years, end of the year. So as soon yeah. as the, the, the international flights are good to, to, to start come back, people come in Australia again, we're going to get George here. We're going to get, uh, I don't know, more competitions. Have the submission only, the submission thing that uh, Alex and Gustavo are fighting as soon as we are back. And all these things like tournaments. We have a tournament in August. I think that one. I hope we're already uh, out of lockdown, so we're gonna have the the, the Winter Cup in August. New South Wales Federation. That'll be good. Yeah, and then we have the Pan Pacific. I want. To, I would like to do a big team for the Pan Pacific this year. So maybe you can. Yeah, everyone. Pacific. Everyone will be ready to go. Yeah, that would be good. Exactly. It will be October, November. Last year we had about what six, eight guys there. Me, James, Gustavo, Alice, uh, Valid, and it was a good year. Paul. This year we can take remember, another thing I'm remember one year, one year we went down with 30 guys. Oh, yeah. That year, that year we got um, second in the male and first in the female division. Yeah. I had no, the, we'll, we'll... uh, the trophy in the gym. It's like, like really traffic with first place female division, second place male division. That was the biggest year. Oh, oh we would have won. Peter De Bing was stacking, stacking, counting, yeah, counting. Exactly. Uh, Counting brackets where they were just his students. I didn't yeah. see him fight, but that's okay. Yeah, but now now he cannot do that anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I, right. I said about competition. Nowadays we follow strict uh, IBJJF. Everybody follows, so there's no way out. If you win, you win. Yeah, uh, especially with the, with the computer thing. Yeah, we have the award. You know, so Remember that? Masters. Yeah, I want to go to the Masters. Last I really want to go to the Masters. That one has to be next Absolute. year. But, but uh, we'll Absolute. go be you and let's take a team there. Uh, the word masters. Yeah. We have, um, yeah, we have all, lots of things. So it's be, it'll be cool. I still have yeah, to keep going, keep training, doing stuff. So it'll be a nice year. Okay. 
Uh, what else we have here? We're going to have the, so with all these competitions, we have the Pan Pacific, we have the Federation, yeah. uh, have our trains, have our seminars, we're going to have new gears. Yeah, back to, back to, back to normal, back to our... Exactly, that's the way we stop. We, lo we lost, we lost what, three months there, three, four months now, from the beginning of the, the shit, but uh, I think it'll be okay. Yeah, it'll be good. It'll be good. Looking, looking forward, looking forward, looking forward to coming back. Definitely. Uh, I have definitely. to go to Macedonia some year. 100% got to take you to Okri. It depends how you want to go. But you have to watch Rocky IV before you go. In summer. Have you watched, have you watched Rocky IV? Rocky IV. <laughs> Tell <them, Eddie. laughs> No, I don't, want, I don't want to run. There's no, no thanks. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Rocky IV. We'll go up the mountain. <laughs> we'll be, hey, you, you wanted hardcore training. Doesn't, doesn't get harder, more harder than much than you have to. No, Even the mats are... Hey, the, I'll warn you, the mats are 25 mil on concrete. Yeah, but I have to tell you something. We yeah. do red belt style. Guys, you see that mountain? Yeah. The finger. Uh -huh. yeah. Down. And down. <laughs> and down. <laughs> we wait here. Me and Rob yeah. will be sitting here watching you. A hundred percent. hundred percent, you know. Oh, it's been Steve, a pleasure, Paolo. Steve, 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 Steve's Steve, there. Big, big waves in Macedonia. There's a big waves there? No, there's a lake there. There's a lake, yeah. Oh, the <laughs> lake's beautiful. The lake is pictures. Pictures don't do it justice. One of my favorite places in the world. I want to, I, if, when I go to Macedonia, I want to go to see Alexander stuff, like the yeah, the heaps. Yeah, people Alexander places. I want to see Hercules yeah. places. Um, yeah, and that's it. And then, uh, and then we train. Then we have fun, drink karaoke, get drunk all night, and that's it. Oh, oh, definitely, hundred percent. The karaoke is not. George yeah, George, George, George got the big, yeah. Get the lion, yeah, get the lion there on the shoulder. Yeah, yeah, good. That was, that was definitely. So, so we're getting George end of the year and we'll celebrate our 20 years of Roots yeah. end of the year as well. That'll yeah. be really yeah. looking forward yeah, to that one, you know. Oh, the whole team together this time, one big seminar. We were supposed to be now then. then uh, yeah, in May. The city. I found the place, I found a good place, the Aboriginal Center there where Hickson did the seminar. In the city yeah. place. Yeah, so... And that, and uh, I think all the rest are good. Yeah, you good. James open a gym, opening a new gym. Yeah. What are you with Hamon will be opening a new gym as well, like moving locations. Yeah. We've we also have, got uh, Metro, Metroville as well. Mike as well down there. So we've got three, yeah, three Metroville, places we're going to open. New, Metroville, a new gym. What are you going to Michael, uh, we have happen there. Michael, Michael in Illawarra as well. So that's going to yeah, be. We have, uh, we have Gustavo maybe next year now because uh, we're supposed to be in a uh, Cronola area, but uh, now. I should wait for next year because of this crisis, but we are doing yeah. good. Yeah, no, yeah, it's, 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 yeah, we've we've really it's the quality that we have. It's, the students are coming up really well now. You can you can and see I, the difference in the in the blues and the purples. Yeah, and know? I think now after this this break, everybody's gonna come crazy to train. Everybody gonna say, ah, so. train, 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 because people at home watching videos of uh, Jiu Jitsu on TV and try to exercise. Uh, you can How much you wait? And you can. Then? I have, I have some news. How much do you weigh now? 100 kilos. Oh, shit. <laughs> I'm back. Look, hey, look at this head. <laughs> it's a square head. I thought I, thought I, I thought that was good. I'm 86. Oh, hey, hey. When I was 86. I stopped, I was 83. Hey. Now I'm 86. I thought you were still 85. Now you're 100. Hey, hey, okay. hey. Last time I went 86. The doctor went, what's wrong with you? I was sick with celiac disease. <laughs> I went, I went to, last time I was 86, I was sick with celiac disease. And the doctor went, geez, you might have stomach cancer. Thank God he wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Man, for me to get to 86 kilos, I'll, I'll end up looking like one of those concentration camps. <laughs> like, like I don't go to a doctor, otherwise you give me some, I don't know, <laughs> some, I don't know, uh, uh, steroids to grow. Right, you come to Macedonia, you'll be 95 kilos. I guarantee you, three weeks. You give me three weeks, 95 kilos. <laughs> it's up to you. Well, let's go next summer. Done, deal. You know, we have to go. From okay. there, we go somewhere else and then go to find it. We have lots of plans. Write down your book and you go. James, ah, says, we'll... James says it's coming. Who's 100 kilos? Ah. 100 kilos. Mate, so perfect drive. 100 kilos. So I can <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay, all right, you take... That's 200 kilos I control. <laughs> done, done. All right, you take, you take care, Paolo. And, um, Thank you. Hope to, hope to see you on the mats ASAP.
I missed that role. That 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 photo that you put up, I went, come, come, come visit me. I went, all right, you know, awesome. Pascal took the lunchtime class. I went to visit Paolo for lunchtime. We'll, we'll go grab lunch after. Man, we started rolling. We forgot the time. One o'clock came, people had to go for work. Forget work. Everybody on the mat, me and Paolo were still rolling. I think we finished at about one twenty. <laughs> No one was allowed to go to work until we finished rolling at 120. Yeah, it, was it, was. Good, it was a good it was a good half an hour roll, you know. I miss it. Yeah. Come to come to Chinatown, we'll be there. James coming, Gustav is coming, you, Stefan's been coming. Lots of guys are coming. Let's do a Thursday or Friday just for us to roll and have some food and yeah. talk shit. Yeah, it's the fun. Like you said, yeah, it's the uh, yeah, it's, it's fun, no? The rules fun. Hanging out. Not the whole fun. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Definitely. Okay. All right, you take care, Paolo, right. and um, we'll, we'll speak. Over and out. Right. Thank, you, and thank you, guys. Thank you, bro. Uh, James and uh, oh, Thiago is there. Thiago is in Brazil now. Uh, Thiago used the brown belt. Uh, Giovanni was just there. Gustavo. Yeah. Uh, who else? Mate Sydney. Who's Mate Sydney? Mate Sydney. I think it might be Michael Hoffman. Michael. Uh, Michael, okay. Uh, Chris. Chris Shiran, da 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 wait for wait for me. <laughs> Roots yeah. TV, that's uh, James and everybody else, all the guys yeah. from Brazil, from Korea, thank you guys. And um Sammy Mark, thank you. And uh we'll be around soon. Don't forget Monday, Wednesday, I'm having the kids class. If you have kids or if you want to participate, yeah. just in. and keep an eye on your Facebook. Thursday we have the yoga and Tuesday you are here talking some fun stuff. All right, Rob. Okay, definitely, definitely. Take care, everybody. Paolo, and say bye-bye, everyone from Roots. Bye, okay, bye, see you, guys. Bye. Cheers. Bye.